Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Radik, are you are you feeling better? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Hey, alhamdulillah, can infect us through the computer. Uh, I will try not to. <laughs> only only electronic viruses I can send through. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Okay, so let, let us discuss now about this important topic about sending blessings upon Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Right? As I said, it has to be in accordance to what we have been taught, as in the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah. So you cannot send blessings upon Prophet Muhammad in congregation. Do you agree? It has to be individual. The Sahaba has never done in congregations. And and again, do you guys send congregations? Thank you. Oh, you don't even pray. So, <laughs> Abenin, I see you. Okay. Um, Sudan. Okay. On a personal level, do you send blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every day? Every day. Every day. I try. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not thinking about Salah. No Salah. There is no. All right, so, and this, this is knowledge, is a lot of people are not using it, you know, because this is very important that we discuss today about what is standing blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which we do need to uh, understand. Yeah. So, first of all, in order, in order to start this topic about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and sending blessings, we need to know why it is so important. Ya Allah said in the Quran in Surah number 33 in verse number 21 yeah laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana liman kana yarju Allah wal yawm al akhir wa dhakarallaha kathira indeed in the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have an excellent example for whoever has hope in Allah and the last day and remembers Allah much all of us will meet Allah one day all right, agreed, Musa. Are you prepared to meet Allah, Musa? You are prepared. Okay, because you have you have not reached puberty yet. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so your 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 this are not counted. You be under Jannah, inshallah. All right, Abdul Rahman. How you? How old are you? Seven. Are you, are you prepared to enter Jannah? Alhamdulillah. Okay, but in Jannah you won't be seven, you know. You be thirty-three years old. See, Musa knows. 33 is all. Do you know how you look when you're 33? Do you know how do you look like? <laughs> Same weight. <is> <laughs> yeah. I'm very weak. Okay, so, so it is important. All of us will meet Allah. There's no doubt about it. Right? Whether we see Allah or not depends whether we enter Jannah or not. Correct? Can anybody in Hellfire uh, meet Allah as in see Allah? No, the privilege is only those who have worked hard enough, who have obeyed Allah to a certain extent, and um, not committing shirk, then they will meet Allah, inshallah. Okay? So, um, in another verse, you, you and I know this, right? Surah number 3, verse number 31, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ تُنُبَكُمُ اللَّهِ وَغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, if you love Allah, then follow me. That means if we do we love Allah? Of course, we have to love Allah. 331. That means say Muhammad if you if you love Allah, then follow me. That means follow the Prophet Muhammad. Right? If and then if you do that, then Allah will love you and forgive of your sins, and Allah is often forgiven the most merciful. Next verse, 332. Say, O Muhammad, وسلم, obey Allah and the Messenger. But if they still turn away, then truly Allah does not like the disbelievers. So now, always remember, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and Allah always come together. That means if you obey Allah only, as in the Quranis, and they refuse to follow the Sunnah, Allah labeled them as disbelievers. As simple as that. Right, because when you when you you see you say a shahada, what is, do you know shahada? Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, followed by 
Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. It must be two. You cannot stop at one. I bear witness that none has right to worship Allah and I bear witness Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his slave and his messenger. How did you feel when you first, first said that, uh, Charlie? Was it was it overwhelming? Because you well, it was it the gratefulness that you have been guided, Ya Allah, or what? Yeah, I think it was gratefulness, uh, very emotional. Hmm. Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever think that was there any? And did you ever think that you were going to be Muslim one day? A little, a little bit. Yeah, when I was like a teenager, I thought I was thinking about it later on in my life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to take the shadow? Because your family are okay with it, yeah? perhaps. Okay. So, so it is important to know to note even in the Quran, Allah has emphasized so much on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. got a surprise. Alhamdulillah. Surprise addition. Yes. Okay. Which surah is this? Yeah, subhanAllah. It is the same as the Quran is the same as some some Christians they only they believe one God, you know? Yeah. But they don't believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's the same as the Quran is and there was a difference. I don't see any difference. Yeah. So how how can they disbelieve in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Allah said obey Allah and the Messenger and where? Right? It's not our it's not all. <laughs> right, there's there's a difference in that. Yeah. Now um, so, for example, when Allah said in Surah number five and number six about wudu, right? Allah said, "Well, you need to wash your hair, your face, your arms, and your feet." How do we? Which order comes first? This is through Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Even in the salah itself, five times a day, it's not mentioned clearly in the Quran, but it's mentioned in which hadith that Allah, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said in which, which hadith about we pray five times a day. No, in the Quran, right? Allah didn't didn't specifically mention, specifically mention you must pray five times a day. Yeah. So one person was asking, right? To tell me who, the, the, No, he just asked, tell me about Salah. A Prophet said, uh, you, you must pray five times a day. And he asked another question, is there anything more? He said, no, unless you wish to do so. Five times a day. Right? This is the hadith. I mean, it's logical that if someone so if you think that the Prophet said something, oh, something. And you're going to be like, no, I don't listen, like, I'm going to get in Quran. It must be really... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean, and and he was the one who first was... Revelation comes to him first. Exactly. Right? Um, and it's quite interesting if you note about that he is he wasn't a poet and his poetry was quite rubbish, actually. It's because when 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 the Sahaba was mentioning, I think it was Abu was mentioning about some poet poetry, and he added something. It was not very good, and and Abu Bakr said, "Well, Alhamdulillah, you, you're not poet because you're poet. You could you could write something similar, or if people accuse him writing similar." Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah, but, but in those days, the poetry, the Arabic language was very high, the standard. Right now. Um, so let us look now, and it's very important, about the rights of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, against us. He has a right, he has seven rights against us. Right? And this is important that we now understand this. So it's not about Allah's being right, even the Prophet وسلم, has rights against us. What's the first right? To believe in him. And it's very important. It is difficult, right, uh, Abid, to believe in somebody that whom we never meet, have never met. Quite difficult. Um, and worst thing, we need to love him more than we love ourselves. Very difficult. Yeah, but but this is sorry. Even more than ourselves. 
Right, there's a reason why must we love Prophet Muhammad so more than ourselves? Yeah, because at the end of the day, that means he will be pressed. Whatever things he do, even though sounds so ridiculous to us, it's important to obey him. That's why we need to love him more than we love ourselves, because we have our we have our own selfish desire, right? But to obey him is even more important. Yeah. So it is important that 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 number one rights apart from Muhammad is to believe in him. That means there's no doubt yet yeah, that um, the message has been sent to him for us to follow, to believe and to follow. Yeah. That's why Allah says in Surah number 64, verse number 8. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا Believe in Allah and His Messenger and the light which He sent down. Because if you don't believe in Him, you might think that He's the one who wrote the Qur'an, right? Because it was in Arabic. It was sent to Him. Yeah? Um, such a coincidence that is the prophets are similar. Because this is what the Quraysh accused Him of, right? That He plagiarized it from the on the Bible and all this, because the stories are the same. Yeah, but if you believe in him, surely, right? That's what they said. What, what did Abu Bakr, what did Allah label him as? Or the, the companions label him as? Abu Bakr? Asidiq, because it means the truthful ones. No matter how how un, how ridiculous it sounds, when the Prophet says so, وسلم, it did happen, right? How would you, uh, Wasil? How, if you do, you were to believe, uh, you were to live in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, that night, I traveled to Masjid Al-Aqsa. I went up or to the skies to receive the command to pray five times a day in one night, and I came back with this message. Would you believe? With the faith that we have, right? And it's quite important to have this because many people they don't believe. Okay? Even in the message of Islam, some people need to go back first to think. A few immediately took shahada, like Abu Bakr Anu, immediately took shahada. Khadija, the, one, the first female, um, Ali Anu, the first boy took shahada. Yeah? Um, therefore, be to believe in Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is therefore an obligation for every individual. This is the first right. Again, belief is very subjective. Somebody believes that Queen's Park Rangers is the best team in the 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 Premier uh, the, 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 the English. <laughs> Sorry, it's not even Premier League. <laughs> I overestimate that. It's in the Conference League. Right. <laughs> Champions, championship, right? But as you know, right, it's just your own belief. Right? It may not be true. Right? Then number one, number one, no? Ten, okay, not very good. So, <laughs> so okay. right? So, this is belief, correct? Um, for example. Which team are you? In the quiz. Okay. <laughs> you believe that you're a winner. You did almost win yeah. until well, there was miscalculation. Yeah. Right? So, so, alhamdulillah, but I did give you a consolation prize. Where's, where's the prize? Someone is on the table and it disappeared. Did you know that I give you a consolation prize? Yeah. Hmm? There's one whole big uh, tab. I'm, I'm kind. <laughs> so anyway, this is belief, right? So the 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 first we have, we're talking about rights of performance last time. The first right that he has against us is that we must believe with certainty in him. No doubt, whatever Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. It's always the truth. Yeah? So Allah has linked this belief in Allah himself and in Muhammad Wasallam as interlinked. They are inseparable. Do you agree? You cannot believe in Allah, then you don't believe in part of the hadith. Authentic one, of course. It must be hand in hand. Yeah? So even who's going to come back soon? 
Isa alaihi salam. Would he go by the law of the Injil, Allah Quran, Quran? Even he has no choice but to follow the, the laws of Quran. He won't be the Imam. Who will be the Imam? Imam Mahdi. Right? He will be the Imam. So, because obviously he doesn't know anything, right? But the law of Muhammad, he just need to follow. But he will come back and he need to follow the laws of the Quran. Yeah? Um, from Bukhari and Muslim, Prophet Muhammad said, I was commanded to fight people until they testify that there is no God who they worship except Allah and they believe in me and what I have brought. When they do that, their blood and property are protected from me except for a right they owe. Their reckoning is with Allah. So you must believe in Allah and Prophet Muhammad Not only that, when you believe in the Prophet Muhammad that means you are living according to his guidance. Agreed? You cannot go according to what your sheikh says, which is quite common, right? Because a lot, it's quite annoying for me, even in Indonesia and Malaysia, they believe more in the sheikh, more in the hadith. And this is so annoying because how can they, they, they believe in the sheikh when there's no hadith they're getting it? When you ask the questions and they will always say, oh, this is what my sheikh said, this is what my ustad say. It's ridiculous. Yeah, is Afghanistan the same? Yeah. Somalia. Egypt. Son? Okay, this is not practicing at all. Albania. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, I'm sure you, you, you have read this verse regarding this hypocrisy. It's 363 verse number one. When, when Allah said, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُهُ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ When the hypocrites come to you, they say, we testify that you are the messenger of Allah, and Allah knows that you are his messenger, and Allah testifies that the hypocrites are liars. Yeah? So, so it is important that we recognize this. You cannot say, yeah, I follow the sunnah. And you can see, in my, my side of the world, nothing they do, they do in the sunnah, right? They do the yasin, they celebrate the prophet's birthday. They do many, many things that completely not in the sunnah, yeah? Um, so, and imagine this, right? Do you think that the rabbis know that he was the prophet of Allah? From which example? No, no, from which example did we know? Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was how the al kaf was revealed, right? So the Quraysh wanted to know whether he's the real prophet. What did they do, Duitan? They asked him for the hour. No. They, they, they were asked to go to rabbis in Medina. Ask them, what the, but how do you know he's a prophet? So when they went to rabbis, and the rabbi said, ask him these three questions. If he can answer these questions, then they are the, he's a prophet. Now, let's be realistic. They could have asked him himself, right? But they did not. Because they know he is a prophet, but if they were to ask and he came up with this answer, then they got no choice but to believe. Yeah? So, um, but because of... The, in those days, right? It's not like us, alhamdulillah, right? We anybody can read the Quran, alhamdulillah. Anybody can make their own um, conclusions and um, interpretations, I should say, all right? And they follow whatever they think it is. But in those days, the rabbis control the Torah, and they changed many things. And that's why I was quite surprised. I told you, right? When I saw this um, YouTube, when I think it was. It was that guy with the with some Jews that wear this long thing, right? Is the Orthodox Jews, and that supposed to be quite practicing. Supposed to be quite practicing. So he he said, all right, well, in the day on the day of judgment, we are given a choice: if we were to be in hellfire, enter hellfire, or there's a choice to come back to this world. That means to be reincarnated according to what well, Buddhism believes, which is quite bizarre because, in general, the Torah and the Injil and the Quran must be the same in terms of messages intro. Must be the same. Must be the same. But they change it so much that they become the choice of hellfire or reincarnation. Of course, they will choose reincarnation. 
Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so because because the the because the rabbis yeah have changed it, the Jews in general, the, the not well, the normal people, ordinary people, they, they got confused. They do not know anything. So the Jews in general, they do not know whether it's the prophet or not, but the rabbis surely knows. Yeah. And um that's what Allah said, as you said, in Surah number two, verse one four six. Aladina Ataina Humul Kitab Musan Kato. Yarifuna who come Yarifuna Abna Ahum or inna Pari Kamin Hum Layak to Moon Al Hakka or whom Yarlamun. To those to whom we gave the scriptures, recognize him as they recognize their own sons. You recognize the sons? Of course. Right, very well. Which is the naughtiest one? Naughtier one. Oh, seriously? Surprise. <laughs> yeah. So, those whom Allah gave the Torah and the Injil, they will recognize Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as they recognize their own sons. All right? But verily, a part of them conceal the truth while they know it. Yeah? Um, okay. So this is the first thing. First rights of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That we must, what? Believe in him. That means to follow his guidance. Second one, to obey him. This is right against us. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's rights. Yeah? So again, many verses in the Quran. One of them is Surah number eight, verse number twenty. When Allah said, "Ya ayuhadin, ya ayuhaladina amanu," when we heard this verse, what must we do? Listen, yeah, and obey. Here yeah, Allah said, "Ati Allah wa Rasula." O you who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger. It's an important command. Yeah. Uh, again, it's not up to us if we call ourselves a Muslims. Means, means complete submission to Allah. We we must obey both Allah and His messengers, Allah yeah? Um So that means obeying Allah, obeying Muhammad, the messengers, Allah is equivalent to obeying Him. Agree? Because nothing that He says will come from Himself. So what examples they have in the Quran or in Hadith that He said something and it was corrected by Allah? So what happened, ya Pastor? Yes, Abbas Surah number? Abbas Surah number? 80. Yeah. So, well, he was literally, because it's, it's, it's what happened to the prophets, right? If they did something wrong, they will other be some of them punished. Who was punished? Who was, who was, who were punished? You know, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were punished, right? Some were tested by Allah with like, Ayub Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was immediately told off. Because he ignored the call. Well, somebody, as you said, blind came rushing because he was so scared of Allah. But he was ignored. Not because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't care about the old blind man, but he was busy doing da'wah. And Allah did say, if Allah wanted to guide him, then he could guide him them very easily. Yes, but the person who's rushing for, for, to, to get guidance from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he must attend to him, he must advise him first, rather than listen to the rich people, right? Because of course the intentions of Muhammad Sallallahu was to make sure that they, if the one of them got guided, inshallah people will follow. Yeah. So um, hadith from Bukhari. Yep. This is um, Abu Huraira narrated that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, "All of my ummah will enter paradise except for those who refuse to." So of course he asked, "Oh, Masjid Allah, who will refuse to enter paradise?" He replied, "Whoever obeys me will enter paradise." Whoever disobeys me has refused. Today, 2024, are there many people who disobeyed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Pakistanis? A lot. Yeah, of course. Because when, when, when my culture is the same, right? Those who, re, who did things according to their own accord, not according to the hadith, has disobeyed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's very clear. Yeah, that is what when, when he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said in his last sermon, Taraqti fukum amrani lan tadilu ma tamasakna bihima kitabillahi wa sunnati nabi. I'm leaving you two things. You will never be led astray if you hold on to them. This is the Quran and my way. Surely his, his way is very clear. Very clear. 
because and not only that, right? Um, Abdul Rahman. This is what Abdul Rahman. This is Abdul Rahman, right? Because is, as you know, the chains of narrations are very clear. Those who study the hadith, well, for them, it's as if this Sahaba were their own friends. They know exactly who it is. So if somebody was in the chain whom they do not recognize, they know it's a weak hadith or even fabricated. Yeah? So it's very clear, the chains of narrations. That's why, was it in the chat group, somebody was thinking about this Salah, which is so many frustrations and all this. Because Salah Tasbih. Heard of this Salah Tasbih? It was a Salah in which it must be or must should be done once in your lifetime. Which is so bizarre. Right? Because if it's so clear, it will be in very Bukhari Muslim and all this. Right? But it's so bizarre that but people are actually doing it. Sorry? I don't know. I do not know. Sorry? A lot of things, a lot of things to be done. Yeah. Another thing is my culture is salah, salah hajat. Salah hajat is when you have something, an intention to do something. Before you do it, you need to do two, two raka'ah. Right? Another innovation, sorry? La, la istikhara, but their own things, right? Another thing, I'm sure you heard of this, before you travel, there's a two raka'ah. Before you travel anyway. When you travel on, on a plane, I know. It seems so. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of lies are, are said on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And this is important that if, if the, you lied against him, you lied against Allah. Because whatever comes from him comes from Allah, 100%. Yeah. Number three. So what was the first one? What is the right? To believe then? Obey. To obey. Third one is to follow. Right? To follow. This is again... 33, 31 just now, you have a good model in Masjid of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for one who hopes of meeting with Allah and for the last day. Yeah? Now, this is what happened, right? Abid, you may agree with me. In, in the Sufi culture, in my, my culture sometimes, right? They mean, this means obey is to wear a turban with the tail at the back, right? Or to wear things that are loose. A green ones. Hold the stick in Juma. Hold the stick in Juma in my culture. Yeah, whatever it is, right? And they, they think that I'll oh, celebrate the Prophet's birthday, right? That is to follow. And this is so, so sad because, subhanAllah, right? Um, I'm rooting the Sunnah. It's not just about physical appearance, it's more towards your conduct. How, um, how good is your manners, especially, yeah? How you obey well, salah tahajud, salah duha, right? We know about it, yeah. The salah, sunnah salah after obligatory prayers, we know about it. See whether you want to obey or not. So, for example, right? Of course, you can just do prayer the whole prayer, correct? Without any sunnah. Is it valid? Yes, of course, inshallah. And according to another hadith, they do the minimum. You will and the, you will and the Jannah, the hadith, very clear, right? But you and I know we have many holes in our salah, many deficiencies. I would want to supplement them with sunnah prayers. Because if you do sunnah prayer, what is the reward? Or sunnah in general? Allah's love us. Love is increased, right? We will become, Allah become the eyes that we see, the ears that we hear, the hands that we use. That means everything that we, every step that we take is guided by Allah. Right. Not only that, if you if you do, talk about the the right? Not zohor, zohor. Right. If you do four rakah before the hor and two rakah after the hor, and another six more, what do we get? No, no. A house in Jannah first. Huh? I'm going to talk later about this. Hold on. Right. So this is four before, two after. But there's also another hadith. If you do four before, four after, you are protected from hellfire. Which one do you want to do? Um, four before, four after, right? Surely. Just another another two minutes. You want to do everything as best as you can. This is sunnah. Yes, sorry. Yes. Yes. So it covers everything, inshallah. And be Yeah, so like, like more than tahajud, right? 
Yes, I've thought so. Yeah, you do need to do it on the same day. If for the future, so inshallah. Right? And not only that, what did Allah say in Surah number 3, verse 31? Qul in kuntum? Ibn Allah. Continue. Qul in kuntum to Ibn Allah. Fatabi'uni. Right? Then? Yuhbib lakum. Wa yaghfir lakum. Dunubakum. Wallahu. Wafur rahim. If if you if you obey Allah, what happened? And the messengers Allah, I'm sorry, follow, follow the Sunnah. You get Allah's love. You get Allah's love. We will in hellfire. No, hundred percent. And then you also get forgiveness. So so all I'm trying to say, if you follow the steps of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we get many things. And it doesn't take long to do Sunnah, right? It's not. It's not it's, it doesn't take it a whole day. The most, inshallah, two rakah is three minutes, perhaps. Right? Is it, is it long? No. Yep. So important that we try to understand this. Yep. About um, the fact that we must try to follow the examples and the, to emulate the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yep. Um, now. These... We talked about also how um, Umar anhu. What did he say about the black stone? Yeah, yeah. You just, sometimes you don't know the, the reason, right? Just do it because the Prophet did it. But it also has hikmah behind it because it shows that the Sahaba didn't ask everything why. why yes, why that's solo. But nowadays, as you know, have we been Umar Rahman? People are killing each other there. Right? So to to kiss is a sunnah, but to kill is haram, <laughs> literally. So no, 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 no. You're wrong. They don't even say salam. I've seen it. We you be? You saw They didn't even do the first salam. They just aim on the sunnah. Do you agree? No, 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 but I do not know. But but I think more importantly, Abdul Rahman, as you said, they don't even say the salam, no. So the, the obligatory prayer, prayer is invalid. They prefer the sunnah of kissing. And this is ridiculous, right? So, um, now, so that means that we, if we follow Prophet Muhammad we are literally follow Allah's command, agreed? Right? Right, without any doubt, yeah, and it will strengthen our deen, inshallah. Yeah, it is not up to anyone to change the sunnah. Do you agree? It's not up to anyone, it's not up to you and me. I, I have to stick to it. It's not about, oh, okay, as I said, in my, in my country, we're getting worse and worse, right? I've never seen this 10 years before, right? That what that, so after the salah finished. They sing salawat ala Muhammad and all this, and then they get in a circle, they shake each other's hands, and yeah, in my my country, yes, or if not all. So, <laughs> so, um, and this is this is bizarre because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has never done it. If you do it, that means you think that you're better than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or you think that Allah has forgotten. And this is it's important that we don't. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um. So this is what Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said. Who's Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? I think the fifth. I mean fifth or fifth, I think fifth caliph, right? Yes. So he's one of the big. Well, one of the big people in those days, right? Now he does this. So he said, "Listen to this. I say the full quotations. The message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a sunnah, and the people in command made him made the sunnah. To adopt them is to confirm the book of Allah, and to act on them is to obey Allah and strengthen the deen of Allah. It is not for anyone to change the sunnah or alter it, or to look into the opinion of those who oppose it, 
Whoever follows it is guided. Whoever seeks help by it will have victory. Whoever opposes it and follows other than the path of the believers, Allah will entrust him to what he turns to and will roast him in hellfire, which is a bad ending. As simple as that. It's a very powerful statement. Yeah. Okay, so repeat again the the first three rights of Muhammad Sallallahu against us to believe, to obey, and to follow. Number four, to love him. It's quite difficult, honestly. Even for me, right? Because we need to do things to gain to love him, right? How do we do things to love? I think you need to read his sirah. That's the best. And for me personally, in my tahajud, in my sujud, I make dua to Allah to increase my love. Not just to Allah, to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because again, Allah, we, we haven't seen Allah. To love him is a bit difficult. But always remember this hadith that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He long, I long to meet my beloved. And the Sahaba was confused. But we are your beloved. No. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are just my Sahaba. My beloved are those who will come after you. They have not seen me, but they believe in me. So he, he longed to meet all of us. On two occasions, we need him in their judgment. What are the two occasions? One for intercession. intercession. Most of us, unless we fall into the 70,000 70, who does not need any intercession, we will need him. Secondly, Al Kawthar, he himself will hand to us individually, personally, the cup to drink from this Al Kawthar. What is Al Kawthar, Musa? A pawn that we'll have water. If we drink from the water, we will never feel thirsty. Abdul Rahman, how long is the day of judgment? 50,000 years. Maybe Afghanistan, 15,000, but the rest is 50,000. Right? It's about to be mistakes there. Okay? No, no, you told me. <laughs> now, and listen to Surah Naf. Read for me, whoever has the Quran. Okay, read for me 924. If I have problems to obey, I will always listen to the, uh, read from read from this. 924. Say. Say, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear a decline, and the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, and striving hard and fighting His cause, then wait until Allah brings about His decision, and Allah guides not the people who are fasting. Yes. So if, if any, anything is more beloved to Allah, not just Allah, right? And His Messenger, then we have to expect Allah's punishment. Do you agree? So if I think, uh, I cannot open up a restaurant without selling alcohol. Surely, then I think that this alcohol is more important than Allah and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then wait, this is Allah's warning. I think Allah brings up his torment to us on the day of judgment. Yeah? Another hadith you and I, we just discussed just now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none of you will believe until I am more beloved to you than your children, your fathers, and all the people. So who said, who, who responded to this? Umar ibn Khattab said to the Prophet Sallallahu I love you, O oh, oh Prophet, O oh, oh, Rasulullah, I love you more than anything except myself. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ya Umar, none of you will believe until I'm dearer to you than even your own self. And Umar said, by the one who sent you the book to you, I love you more than myself. Yeah? And Prophet Muhammad says, now you have it. That means now you have com achieved complete faith. As we discussed just now, I think it's important to have this. That means we are prioritizing following his orders more than our desires. Our desires surely we must have money, wives, and all this, but you know, we, we want our the promise of Islam following him is more important than what we think it is. Surely we we discuss we discuss in our uh, retreat about about um, for until 12 30 in the in the evening night. What is the topic? How to find a righteous oh, wife. Help your brothers. Oh. <laughs> Everybody was so interested. Oh, was so yeah, key. A lot of questions. All right. 
and and this is how um yeah we we, we spend a lot of time discussing it um which is a very important topic yeah and surely in the hadith you and i know that the one that we must prioritize in choosing your wife will be the dean not anything else surely of course it must be your type right it cannot be something choose somebody that is not your type and you look at other women it must be your type in all of this yeah but only you right <laughs> thank you for <laughs> okay now in relation to love is nasiha what is nasiha advice good counsel sincere conduct yeah we we understand adinu nasiha which means the deen is nasiha three times repeated yeah and they asked to whom allah's messenger and he says allah sent to allah and his book and his messenger right and the imams are the muslims and the common people so that means important to give advice to anyone and this is quite ironical right you know and you and i know that especially in muslim rulers they cannot take nasiha right you end up in prison all the previous scholars end up in prison you know al-qayyim rahimallah yeah tamiya rahimallah everybody end up in prison i think bukhari right also if i'm not mistaken right muhammad even ibn kathir also was in in this part of the time yeah um if, if i love i love to read you know when for example when abu bakr became, became the um caliph he would give um what he advised the people it's always in the last part they would say if i make any mistakes please tell me and even Omar bin Khattab did the same thing, right? And this is, this is important that we um, are the one who give advice because everybody make mistakes, yeah? Now, um, now, as loving the Prophet ﷺ is an obligation, it comes with an excellent reward. What is the reward of loving Prophet Muhammad ﷺ? That you'll be with him right and this is the biggest biggest reward subhanallah said that a man came to prophet muhammad and asked when will be the last hour oh masjid allah he said what have you prepared for it and he said i have not prepared a lot of salah or fasting or charity for it but i love allah and the messenger the prophet muhammad said you will be the one you will be with the one whom you love and he also said whoever loves me will be with me in the garden so it is important that we somehow or other the men whom we have never met we need to build this love if you build this love build this love for prophet Muhammad, we want to do many things right in order to be with him in jannah but always remember do not confuse this with shirk you cannot say and i heard in some mosques when they say ya rasulullah in, the, in one of the, well, I think he was giving his uh, the sermon in the, the du'a. This is, how can you say, Ya Rasulullah? Perhaps in a, another aspect may be okay, right? But when you say, Ya Rasulullah, that means you are invoking Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From you I know, in our Al-Fatiha, we say, Iya ka na'budu wa iya ka nastam. Your homework, homework, right? You're supposed to do that, remember? What does it mean? Musa. Only to you we worship, and only to you we ask for help. But then, how can you ask help from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Again, we you have, if we go to Umrah, you will see many people when they, when they make du'a, they turn the face to the grave and make du'a in his direction. That's why some of the security they would turn the body to the other side, turn the other side, and I did the same as so. well. And it's important to enjoin and forbid evil. This is evil to the worst, one of the extreme evil. Yeah, to seek help from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, of course, we need his help for uh, intercession, inshallah, for the Al Kawthar. But that's not not how not the way to do it. How do we how do we uh, ask for, for intercession? What can we do? The dua of the Dadan again is in the Sunnah. The, the, the reward. Yeah. Um, so love of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it can be manifest in many ways. Yeah, one will prefer what Prophet Muhammad came with over his own desires. 
his anger against people will be for the sake of Allah. So that means you're angry, right? Because why are people doing these innovations and all this? Right? You're angry, right? It's what we are doing today, right? And he will mention the name of Prophet Muhammad often in his blessings, yeah? Uh, there's, there's, there's a yearning to meet him on the day of judgment, yeah? Um, he will exalt and expect him and be humble when he hears his name mentioned. Can you imagine something that you read a lot and so you went to the, um, what's his name? In Hyde Park? It's because why not people are insulting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam earlier. He's a pedophile and all this. You will be very angry. Because you're supposed to love him more than you love yourself. It's as, as if when people say about him, it's as if people say about you. Like your mother. Like mother. Yeah? Yes, of course. There, there need to be, a, because at the end of the day, Islamophobia has been existing way, way before all the previous prophets, right? Before. So we are not unique. We shouldn't feel, feel so insulted that we are very, very angry, as you said, you know, to, to completely lose control and to have a bad impression of Islam. Burn the car. This, you know, because this is what the Pakistanis do, right? When they, Bangladesh, they, they have somebody insult, this is all this, this Islamophobia, and then they start to burn this, burn that. That's completely un, uh, counterproductive. Sorry? Yes. Yeah. Completely unproductive. That's why, for example, in, in the riot, right? Recent riot, some of the mosques, they actually invite them in. I explain some people to Shahada, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So this is so much productive. It's an like example, right? Same example as um, Wasil, when the Muslims took over Mecca, conquest of Mecca, they could have killed everyone, and all of the Quraysh expect to be killed. But subhanAllah, with, with the mercy of Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he forgive all of them, all of them, all became Muslim. Yeah? So th th there's a lot of reasons to be merciful to the ignorant. What is the, sorry, what is the verse in the Quran? A similar thing. Irifa'abilati? Yeah, you repel evil with goodness. Right, continue. So, do you know how um, the Prophet forgave people for it and his mercy? Yes. So, as soon as the Prophet passed away, everyone, a lot of them, sorry, not everyone, a lot of the Muslims, they would leave the apostate. Yes. So, the only few people that would remain were the people who fought it. Ah, alhamdulillah, that's good of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, if you again, if, if you were to read the history of Ta'if and the incident, is much more deep in much more detail. Subhanallah, it's not, it's not just a small injury, you know. Quite near, but I think about three or four hours, I think. Right. <laughs> I don't know about your generations, but um, yeah, because, because if, you, if you read about the Sirah written, it's not just about this bruise here, bruise there, the whole blood. Can, for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi can be filled in the shoes. He was bleeding very badly. Even though to be able to be him, I said, destroy all them, you know, <laughs> kill them all. As a human being, right? But he's not. He's of a different caliber. Yeah. Um, okay. Number, number five, to respect him. To respect Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, and it's quite different than, than others, right? Uh, okay, this is in Surah number 48, verse number 8 to 9. Inna arsalnaka shahida wa mubashira wa nadhira li tu'minu billahi wa rasulihi wa tu'azziruhu wa tuwaqiruhu. O Prophet, we have sent you as a witness and bring our good news and a warner. So believe in Allah and his messenger and help him and respect him. Yeah. Um, so... Respect, what does the respect means? It means to honor him, to exalt him. Again, not to the extent of shirk, right? There's a lot of difference. There's a lot of people, in, especially Asian culture, commit shirk, right? Uh, calling him with the noblest of titles. So that means when we say Rasulullah, we must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What happens if we don't say that? Sir? Yeah, well, well, hellfire, right? Literally, yeah, it's hellfire. 
right? Uh, when when Gabriel say came and performed an amin three times, right? One of them, those who, if my name is not mentioned, he says, Allah Salam, then he will be in hellfire. And if you don't say, send blessings. Yeah. Um, okay. Because of time, I need to go quickly. All right. Um, And of course, when uh, we talk about respect Muhammad we need to respect his family, right? Also, the Sahaba, the Shia was always cursing the Sahaba, right? It's completely out of order. Because of all the people, this were the highest of all the Muslims ever, the first generation, followed by second and third generations of Muslims, yeah? The next one, number six, to judge according to the Sharia. This is where a lot of people want to judge according to their own will or according to these local imams and all this. You must judge everything according to the Sharia. This shows the rights of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. In Surah number 4, verse 58, Allah said, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you quarrel over anything, refer back to Allah and His Messenger, if you believe in Allah on the last day. So when, whenever you come up with solutions, so for example, when people come to me with marital problems, surely I need to follow the Quran and Sunnah, right? Not to just, oh, divorce, talak, talak, talak. No? It's not just like that, right? You need, what is the procedure in the Quran? The person will divorce No. The, yeah, so for example, well, you're not happy with your wife, inshallah, in the future. You, go to... <laughs> you need to live separate rooms, right? Separate beds. Cannot solve, then you need to be uh, have an uh, mediator, right? Sorry? Yeah, all from each family. So all this is clear in the Quran. Yeah? In terms of inheritance, you must follow the Quran. Yeah? Uh, you need to go according to the Fara'id, according to what Allah legislated, not according to what you think it is. Yeah, the woman who wants always 50 50 equal. Like Everybody's doing it. I heard them say this. Even Indonesia, I'm sure Pakistan do it. They want 50 50, right? Or they, they, we discussed before, right? For example, this. No, <laughs> no, I discussed before in the, the even people. Yeah. But the problem is, uh, a bit the imams perhaps some of them have no knowledge, yeah. and I hate to say this, and even especially the, even in Malaysia, Indonesia, yeah, when it comes to divorce, the, somehow they always favor the man. The women are completely isolated sometimes, whereas in the UK law it's the opposite. They always favor women, so in the end they get 50-50 usually, and that's why a lot of women, Muslim women, want the UK law to legislate. Yeah. Why? Yeah, the wife came to the UK to get more money. <laughs> How much money do you want? Do you want to leave in this life? Yeah. Um. So that's how it is, right? That people come to this country and some, somehow, somehow or other, right? You follow the Hollywood style of marriage. You want to propose in one knee, right? Do you agree, right? Some people say that they can, and because you want, you put a ring on his hands. If it's not mahram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In in fruit juice, if you want it to, to you bring it. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, a bit of a a bit of purity there, except all the of all the haram things. And this is how it is. And some people prefer to do the uh, Islamic marriage second. They, that means they go to do, to the uh, council first, in order to get your English marriage legalized. Then the Sharia. Then before that, you move together. It's very muddled up. Of course, a lot of people are doing that because they've, they're scared of, you know, in case they divorce, <laughs> very easy. <laughs> they say talak three times. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yes. The Islamic marriage should be first and then the after, or other way around, isn't it? Not the. <laughs> Your country mate, Somalian. I'm and also, Shem, the problem also is like sometimes, you know, like, you know, women, they should treat everything. Yes. And sometimes they think that, oh, you know what, she, she has to give everything, but it's a man's responsibility, not the, not the yes. wife, isn't it? 
but they get confused as well. They they get like you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so this is important that when we know Quran, when we have any problems, we refer to the Quran and the Sunnah, not according to our whims and desires. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's move on. Last one, the seventh. Um, what do you call it? This is what we're talking about to go to this topic to send prayers and salam to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, uh, this is his right. Yeah, uh, many hadith regarding this. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Whoever blesses me once, Allah blesses him ten salah, ten times, and ten wrong actions falls away from him, and he raised he is raised by ten degrees." Do you see uh, the salawat every day? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Not the salah, no. Others than salah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. <laughs> and now listen to this. The, the, and this is what, that was by Sahih Muslim, so authentic, inshallah. Right? The nearest people to me on the day of rising will be those who have said the most salah on me. The nearest. Surely we want to be nearer to Prophet Muhammad. Agreed? You want to be nearer to Muhammad? Or you want to be with QPR fans? Okay? Uh, this was Tadmidi. So many, many hadith. Um, so the question is. Um, what do we say, you know, in when we send blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do we say? Well, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad. That is, yeah, that is good, but better, better still. The tashahud, right? Because it's in the hadith. Because Prophet Muhammad Ibn Masud said, when one of you asks Allah for something, so this is sorry, it's not the hadith. This is from Abu Hamid Al Saidi. Yeah. Uh, they, they say, Pastor of Allah, how should we pray on you? So this is the direct question. They know the importance of the uh, salawat, or sending salah of Prophet Muhammad but they want to know how to say it. And then he was, he was describing about the second part of the shahud. Yeah, so that, that, that is the best. right? So as you know, we should always send the best. Again, there's no, nothing wrong with Allah and Muhammad. But the best is still from the uh, the second part of tashahud. Yeah. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I will hear whoever blesses me at my grave. If someone is far away and blesses me, that is also conveyed to me. But that doesn't mean that you and I in Masjid Nabawi would turn to him and, and, and you know, as you are worshipping. And it's completely wrong. Yeah, and that is also wrong for people. I'm sure you heard people say, right? Uh, you're going to Medina, right? Can you please send send my salam to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Precisely, you you're doing every day anyway, right? The angels will send personally to salam to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, be careful of all these innovations. Yeah. Um, we, we also need use his uh, the praising of the ten salam of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on as an etiquette of making dua, right? Because if you don't do that, what happened? Dua will be suspended. Yeah. So what is the etiquette of making dua? Praise Allah first, send blessings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then ask forgiveness, and hmm? yeah, forgiveness be regarding the best. Forgiveness du'a is Yunus du'a. No, that is individual du'a for the best side of istighfar, right? But the best, according to etiquette of making du'a is Yunus al because the hadith, the du'a that begins with that, Allah will not reject it. Yeah? Which surah? What's number? 87. You have to be confident. Akram. 87. What? No, it's not here. <laughs> okay. Um, again, Prophet Muhammad said the closest of people to me on the day of resurrection will be those who send the most blessings upon me. So I know the evening and morning adhkar that is uh, sending a salam from Muhammad that is not authentic. No. You need to, no, in the sense that you, 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 you need to do it at other times. So that is quite a weak hadith to do it only on the 
morning evening at night. Yeah, it's not authentic because that that restricts it to that. But you can do it in other times. You should add it more other times, inshallah. Okay. Um. Okay. So, very quickly, what are the benefits of saying blessings from Allah? Now, first of all, you're obedient to Allah's command. The first thing, right? You reap the immense reward. Okay. Um. As I said just now, you will get ten good deeds. You raise ten sins, and you raise up. It is in degrees of 10 degrees in status. Yeah, this, this is to benefit from Imam Muhammad. This is a hadith. Yeah. Another hadith we said before whoever sends salah upon me once, Allah will send salah upon him tenfold. He raised 10 sins, then raising 10 degrees in status. Number three, and it's quite interesting a solution to your problems. This is when Ubay Ridanhu asked Prophet Muhammad, Oh, Masjid Allah, I invoke salah upon you often. How often of my supplication should be de dedicated for you? Interesting, right? Because well, how, how, I have so many su supplications. What, how many percentage of my supplications will be for you? And then he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as much as you wish. Well, by us, a fourth, the Prophet Muhammad replied, as you wish, but more the better. Well, by us, a half, the Prophet Muhammad replied, as you wish, but the more the better. SubhanAllah, more the better. Because we always make dua, right? Ya Allah, give me money, wife, uh, to ourselves. But actually, Prophet Muhammad said, the more the better, more than half the better. And then, Obay asked, two thirds, the Prophet replied, as you wish, but the more the better. And then, okay, should I dedicate all my dedications to you? The Prophet said, in that case, your needs will be sufficed and your sins will be forgiven. So, what I'm trying to say, we might think in our mind, written, that, oh, uh, I need so much dua to myself. So that means the more dua I go read to others, the more I lose out. It's not one of these hadith. Because when you do this, your needs will be sufficient and your sins will be forgiven. Right? So it is a solution for all our problems. So sometimes when brothers, when we think that Allah, well, we have so many problems, perhaps we may change tactic by sending blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, more than uh, our own dua. Now this is for Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimullah. Know that no Muslim servant sends abundant salawat on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except that Allah illuminates his heart, forgives his sins, puts his heart at ease, and makes his matters easy. So send abundant salawat so that Allah will make you from the followers of his path, make you active on his sunnah, and make him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our companions in paradise. So you, you, when doing this, you achieve many things. Yeah, so never, never think that, uh, if I, I oh, believe it or not, we do, do not have much time, right? How many hours we spent on sleeping at, at them? Eight hours. It's got a lot. <laughs> How many hours you spend on your job? Return? Oh, no. Eight hours. Eight hours. So, Eight hours. so you have 16 hours finished. That's what, that's what 10 hours. So 18 hours. How many hours left? No, you got, you got 10 hours working. You just got six hours left. How many, Musa, how many hours you spend on eating? I see you're getting a lot of weight. Alhamdulillah. Allah mabarik. You have lunch, dinner, breakfast. One hour? Okay, one hour. All right, let's be fair. All right? So you have three hours left. Agree? What are no. things is. <laughs> Sorry? No, right. oh, he, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. he will take the, what do you call it, meal deal. <laughs> meal deal is very easy to prepare. What, what else do you do? Okay, play time on your phone. That makes, they take about one or two hours. A screen time. <laughs> Please don't expose me. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, put, let's put two hours. So you have one hour. Just one hour, you know? And this is to worship Allah. 
Is it fair? Not really, right? And within one hour. Not fair. Not fair. It is like if you've been to Hajj before, you know, we have about six hours in Arafah from Zuhur to, to Maghrib, six hours. Only. You think six hours, what can we do? So many things to do. People, Pakistanis, Afghans, Egyptians are sleeping, many, some of them, within six hours, right? Sleeping. I don't understand because they don't, right? Because we're tired. It's quite ridiculous, right? <laughs> I mean, right? Um, like six hours, and I can guarantee you, these six hours pass just like that. So what I'm trying to say regarding this hadith, that don't think that because you have so limited time to make dua to Allah, that you are not, you have no time to send blessings to Prophet Sallallahu By doing that, sending blessings to Prophet Sallallahu you, you may, according to this hadith, right, solve whatever things that you are, seeking for solutions all right so prophet muhammad would never lie to us yeah so don't just think about yourself i want this i want a spouse pious wife uh, i have problems with my work i have this i have that i have no money and all this okay let's make dua of course very good alhamdulillah but perhaps you may want to dedicate ourselves to spending half the time on making dua but let's say you have, you have 10 minutes making dua Five minutes to send blessings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because it, it, it removes sins, right? This add on to it. You have Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as your companion, right? And you resolve your issues. It's everything, right? What Allah wants to say. So let's let's change our tactic, inshallah, right? And to include the sending blessings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as part of our dua, inshallah. Yeah. Now, um. It reminds, number three, right? This is benefits. A solution for your problems. Yeah, same thing yeah, about the um, just now, same hadith. Yeah, angels send salawat, salah upon the servant. The Messenger of Allah said it to so Ibn Majah, there is no Muslim who sends salah upon me except that the angels send salah upon him as long as he continues standing salah upon me. So let the servant de decrease in this or increase. That means, Prophet was saying that. If we send blessings upon us, the angels will send blessings upon us. Yes, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. As I said just now, uh, and uh, number five is closeness to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The closest of people to me on the day of judgment will be those who send the most salawat upon me. From Tarmidhi. Right? You want to be you want to be the Egypt with the Egyptians? Uh, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So he creates salawat. Albanians, drug people, or <laughs> I mean, right? Um, number six, we talk about is important to send Muslims in, in the dua, inshallah. Yeah, um, number okay, there's a lot of things which, which we discussed before, inshallah. Right so now, when to send the blessings. At any time, not just morning and evening, but any time, especially on Fridays. Agree? Friday is very important. One of the main things to do on Friday is send more blessings to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, so do send don'ts. Number one, send blessings individually. Right? He's using the words taught to us of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, for those who are new, you can just say, Ya Allah, uh, send our blessings to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Send your blessings to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can do it in your own language, but the best is of course to do the, the tashahud, inshallah. The next one, do not commit shirk. Shirk, right? Because never, never think that it is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who will answer our du'a. It's always, always Allah. Yeah? Second part, Allah Masalli ala Muhammad ala wa ala Muhammad and all this one. Yeah? Next one, do not send blessings in unison. I mean, it's in congregation, right? You need to do individually. There's no hadith at all that the Sahaba, the Tabi'in did in unison, right? Next one, do not send blessings after the obligatory prayers because it becomes an innovation because it's never been, never, never been done that before. For example, right? Some people have this cult culture and habit 
before they leave the house, they say, I have the kursi. It's good, of course. But if you do it every time, it becomes an innovation. You do should do once in a while. So, for example, after do, they say a salam, automatic your hand, make dua. It will be an innovation if you do it constantly. There's no hadith that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam or the Sahaba and Tabi'in, after they salam, they, they lift up their hands. Agreed? The best dua is always in the salah, not outside the salah. You can do that occasionally, but not all the time. Okay? Any questions? Sorry? We can say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. Very simple. Send blessings and praise to Prophet Sallallahu But the most complete, the, yeah, this is in Tashahud. That's the most, the best one. Which one? You can, yes, of course, it's up to you. Yes, you can say. Yes. 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 Yes, inshallah. Yeah. Wasil, clear? Right? So, something that we need to improve, inshallah, including myself, right? Improve in order to send more blessings for Prophet. Questions? Clear? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our blessings, standing and blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us in the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help sisters and brothers of Palestine, in Sudan, in Yemen, in all places that are facing uh, food crises and oppressions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whom he be pleased with on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and shortcomings and grant all of us Jannah to Faradaus. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tomorrow lessons at EICC. Right? Afghan mosque at about six o'clock. Yeah. And next is on Saturdays at three o'clock. Don't forget, inshallah. Yeah, for our next topic. Yeah, Jazakumukhar, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.